Hello, this is Brock Lemires, and we are continuing our study of embedded systems design. We are looking at program flow instructions, and in this video, we're going to look at an example of using unconditional jumps and branches. So let's remind ourselves about these instructions. Uh, the MSP430 gives us an unconditional branch instruction with the mnemonic BR, and you provide it with one operand, and this instruction will actually take the value of the operand and place it directly into the program counter. This is a great instruction because you can put any value in the source and you can that is moved into the program counter and you can access the entire memory range of the MSP430. The downside of it is that it takes three words of program memory to store the opcodes and operands, so it's a larger instruction. To get around that, they invented or created the jump instruction, which has a mnemonic of JMP, and this also unconditionally alters the program counter, but instead of putting an absolute number into the program counter, what it does is it, it applies a signed offset to it that can take on the value of up to negative 511 down to positive 512. So this has a limited range that it can move the program count counter to, <clears throat> but it takes less memory in program memory. So you can go basically 511 instructions back, or you can go 512 instructions forward in program memory. And this is how you usually implement things like if else and case statements. If you ever get jump out of range, that means you you have an address offset that is further away than what can be represented with this range, this offset and you need to use a branch, okay? All right, so let's just do a uh, kind of a silly program where we watch the program counter jump around, but I really wanna pay attention to what the program counter is and see how we can selectively jump over a seg segment of code and then jump back and do it and then jump over and then at the end, we'll throw a branch down. So let's fire up Code Composer and I'll put this little program over here. So we're gonna come over here into CCS and I'm gonna go file new CCS project. And let's go ahead and MSP 430s selected. Let's call this ASM, let's call this flow for program flow. And we'll, we'll do all these examples with that kind of header. Uh, and let's do jump and branch. And then come down here empty only. <clears throat> and we'll finish this up. Okay. So here's our, here's our program and let's come down here and let's take a look at kind of what we're doing here. So we're just gonna type this in. Uh, so let's now put main and we put an address label there. And then we're gonna do, let's move something into R4. So we'll, let's move zero into R4. And now we're gonna do the jump instruction. <clears throat> now we have been using jump because we had to make an infinite loop before, but we never really knew what it was doing. So now what we know is that when I put jump and I put an address label, it is going to calculate the offset of where this address label is, depending on where I put it, and apply that to program counter. So that's what this jump instruction does, unconditional. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna do, do this first, and now this label is where, what I used here, so I'm gonna jump down to here, and let's go ahead and we'll put a pound, one into R4 right now. And then what we'll do is we'll go jump and let's go back in, in the program. So let's do, do this second and I'll come up here now and I'm gonna come back and go do this second. And we'll go move.w pound two into R4. <clears throat> and then we'll kind of clean that. Boom, 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 boom. Ah, da, 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 da. And go and put that there so that it turns purple. And now we're here, so let's do a jump and we'll do a label called done. So then down here, we'll have our done label. And now that we're here, we'll do a branch, okay? Now when you branch, <clears throat> this is key. This is super important. <laughs> you gotta use immediate addressing because you are putting the address main, you want 8,000 and whatever it is into the program counter. If you leave this off, what it's gonna do is it's gonna say, oh, you are using symbolic addressing and you will go up here, you will go to this address and retrieve the information from that address. So if this happens to be at 8000A, it will go to 8000A and retrieve the information and put it in the program counter and the program counter will crash, okay, the computer will crash. 
We don't want what's in 8000A. We want 8000A. So we have to put a pound in front of that address label, and then that's what makes the branch instruction work. Okay? Forget that pound sign. Uh, no good. All right, so let's go ahead and fire this up. I got my MSP430 plugged in, launchpad board. And what I'm going to do is pull this over so you can kind of see. Let's go down. Let's start with our memory browser, and let's go to 8000. Okay, so this is where program memory is. And notice that when I download, program counter is at 8000. That means that the first address in program memory is where we're going to start executing code. So that's where the first opcode of the first instruction will be put. And, and it's got 4031, 3000, okay, whatever that does. Well, it turns out that it's got this stop WDT label there, uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, actually, that's at 8004. If I pull this over, uh, let's see what's over here. It's actually got this reset label at it. <clears throat> and I'm kind of looking there, go like, it's almost like there's instructions that are in our program before the main loop. And it turns out that that's true. So if you go back and look at the skeleton that the CCS gives us, it starts off with a bunch of directives, which again are not, they don't take off, uh, they're not opcodes and operands, they're just instructions to the assembler. And we finally get down here, and there are two instructions right here that do something that we didn't put in here. This was put in by CCS. The first one creates an address label at, called reset at this address. And since that's the first instruction in memory, reset is the label for 8,000. Then at 8,000, the way that this memory browser works is it'll put the label and then it'll put the contents at it. So then you see this sitting there and that's great. And then at the next address label, which is stop WDD, then that's at 8,004. And then main, main does actually not occur until down at 8,000 and A. So let's, let's run our program, or let's step our program and watch program counter kind of walk through these things. So I'm gonna hit go. It did something, it, it, it did something with this move instruction and now the program counter went to 8004. And you can tell that it's now at this line. And it's like, okay, it just executed an instruction to move the program counter to the next instruction. I do it again and it's now down to 8000 and A which is where our program finally is. Okay, so we're watching it. Now let's do this. I'm gonna have R4 right here. Let's go ahead and go load that up with zero. And now I'm gonna jump to do this first. Okay, so here's our entire program. So it's actually gonna move down to here and watch what happens. Boom. It jumped down to 8,012. And if I come out to memory, that's where this label sits. But more importantly, look at what happened. I jumped over this segment of code. So I was able to have code that is packed into memory in a sequence, but I told the program counter, that's fine. I'm not gonna execute this code right now. I'm gonna jump down here and I skipped these instructions, okay? And this is just to kind of show you, that's how you make programs that can kind of selectively execute code based on stuff that's happening. In this program, we're just always doing it, but once we get to conditional jumps, it'll make, you'll see the versatility. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll go boom. I loaded one into there. I'm hopping back here. Okay, so I'm gonna hop back to here. I'm gonna go boom, 8000E, which if I look there, do the second. So I'm now I'm up to 8000E, which is where the program counter. I'm gonna go ahead and move two into R4, and now I'm gonna jump down to done. And now the question is this. I come out and look at the instruction that is sitting at branch main, <clears throat> okay? The op code is 4030. And I, who knows where that, I mean, that's just what it is. Nothing you can do about that. But look at what the operand is. The operand for this is pound main. It is 8000A. Remember, the branch is gonna move this address into the program counter. Is that where we wanna go? And it turns out that the, the answer is yes, that's where we wanna go, because I wanna come back up to this address right here in our program memory, 8000A because that's where my main label is. So if I hit go, it's gonna go boom, it pops up to main, and the program counter goes to 8000A. 
And we did it, okay? So now you can just sit there and step this thing and you watch it kind of jump around and everything's banging away. And that's it, you did it. So that's just a quick example of unconditional jumps and branches. But more importantly, it was more about watching the program counter and understanding how things are moved around in the CPU registers to track where you're executing code. All right, congratulations. As always, remember to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you. So the question for you is, what do you think the value of the program counter is going to be when I hit this last instruction? It's going to put the program counter back up to main, which if I'm looking at this address or the memory browser, main was at 8000 and A. So if I hit this, I should pop up to what in the hell just happened? What the fuck?